All right, my neighbor gave me these. He was at an event. Um, there's a university about a mile and a half from where I live called uh, Santa Clara University. And uh, they've been uh, very lucky over the last couple of years of getting some big donations. Uh, Silicon Valley is kind of a rich place and they've gotten a lot of donations and they hit the $1 billion mark. Yeah, $1 billion of donations. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. So they've been adding to the university and doing a bunch of stuff. Um, there was a, a donor appreciation or I don't know, maybe they were just trying to get people to donate money. So I think it was kind of an appreciation thing where people went to this event and they got these wristbands and uh, the wristbands say, uh, Santa Clara Rising, uh, SCU, Santa Clara University.edu. So anyway, um, everybody was given these things and they were customized. So when you were in the audience and they said, okay, our silver tier donators, and then everybody's uh, wristband lights up of that class. Okay, the people who have donated more than a million dollars, you know, there's lights up fancy or something, right? It was, it was that it was that kind of thing. Um, so this company is called a CrowdSync. And it's, I guess they're kind of like a Bluetooth or something, something like that enabled. And so there's a host computer that can talk to these things. So it tells, they're all serialized and they all have different donor amounts programmed into them, whatever. Anyway, they can light up different different groups at different colors and stuff. So uh, he gave me these. He thought they'd be a, a, a fun teardown from my, my, my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's take a look at one. I've hacked this one. Uh, and uh, there is a, a reset button on the side. So here you go. Here, this one's red, blue, green, uh, violet, uh, kind of a yellow, awful yellow. Um, there's a blue, here's a white, awful white. Uh, and here's one that's RGB, RGB, RGB. Uh, here's one that does rainbow -y stuff. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, different colors. Um, uh, this one is just obnoxious. <laughs> and then turns itself off. Okay, so I got it to do that much. Um, all of the batteries were dead in these things. And of course, here's another gripe of mine. These all go into the landfill and they have lithium batteries in them. So yeah, not good stuff. So I'm gonna take all the batteries out of them and recycle them. Um, so anyway, let's open one of these up and see what's inside. Okay, so I've got one under the microscope here and you can see the uh, PC board. It's pretty simple. It runs off of two three volt lithium. So it's six volts going in. Uh, there is a voltage regulator uh, that takes it down to 3.3 volts. So the circuit runs at 3.3 volts. Uh, there's one chip that is a um, RF receiver. We'll take a look at that. And the other chip is some type of microprocessor that's been bead blasted that you can't tell what it is. So, but it's just a microprocessor. And then on the edges of the board, both top and bottom of the board are LEDs, red, green, blue LEDs that they can light up in different fashion. So pretty simple. All right, so let's look at the data sheet of that, of that receiver chip here. It is a C CMOS tech, never heard of them. Uh, low power, 433.92 megahertz AUC receiver. So this is, um, on off keying, uh, it's a receiver. So it's either the carrier's there, the carrier's not there. That's the modulation, it's either on or off. And uh, depending on what crystal you put on the thing, you can get it to operate at, uh, at the uh, 433. And yeah, so it's just a cute little chip. Uh, eight pin, a look at the, uh, look at the, uh, circuit here. So VDD comes in, bypass caps. Uh, the antenna comes in. You can filter it if you want uh, to get rid of any extraneous stuff like a bandpass filter for the for the pre-selector. Uh, there's a, a crystal that goes into the pin five, seven or eight, or, uh, six and seven aren't used. And then the data out comes on pin three. All right, so let's hook one up. All right, so I've hooked up a couple wires so I can power it up. And I've connected a blue wire to pin three. I think it was pin three. Yeah, pin three is data out. 
So I'm, I'm checking the data that's going between the receiver chip and the microprocessor. Um, that's really the only data that I have access to. Um, so let's put that on the, uh, on the oscilloscope over here. Okay, there we go. We're monitoring the data and it's just a bunch of junk. Um, doesn't really seem like it's, doesn't really seem like there's anything there. It's just no, noise. It's, oh, and then every once in a while, I'll see something that actually looks like data. And I thought, well, that's it. Oh, there's another one. It actually looked like data. And I don't know if we can capture one of those events or not. Maybe we can go really far out. And if we capture one of those, I can hit the run stop button. Yeah, that looks like maybe it was one there. Let's try to zoom in on that. Uh, let's see, let's uh, try to zoom in over there. And zoom down far, oops, zoom down farther. Yeah, there we go. So that might be a data packet, I'm not sure. So anyway, the, the one thing that I did find very, very interesting, I'll let this run again, is uh, I have uh, remote control uh, on my lighting in the garage, so I can turn the lighting on and off. And when I, oh, there's a the data. So did you see that data? Uh, somebody did that. So if I push this, uh, I think you could see it there. Let me, let me turn it back on again. And I'll pause. Okay, great. All right. So when I push the button, this is me. So this remote control I have to, to control the lighting is, is, is also on 433 megahertz, it seems. <laughs> and so I can zoom in on one of my packets. This was one of my packets. And so this is actual data. So this is a couple start bits and then some data. It's, it's saying, hey, I want to turn you I want to turn you on. Uh, and then it repeats, repeat, 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 repeat. repeat. So it's, it's sending these bursts of information. Um, and so, yeah, uh, it does do what it needs to do. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, so I could use it as a receiver to try to intercept communication. Uh, but I can use it as a spy thing, too, because maybe my neighbor has something that he controls with 433 megahertz. Uh, every once in a while, see if I can hit the run stop button. If I say, oh, I just saw one. Let me, yeah, was that one? Maybe not. Let's see here. It's there, oh, I saw one. I saw one. It's really hard to. There. That looks like there's one there, right? Looks like it's repeat, repeat, repeat. Let's zoom out on that one here. Yeah, that's definitely data, right? It's it's a burst and then a burst and then a burst. If we uh, if we zoom in on those, look at this first one. It's like uh, let's zoom in a little farther. Okay, so the leading edge of this data transmission was like like square wave, like one, two, three, four, and then data. Let's go to the next packet here. Yep. Yeah. Again, it's one, two, three, four, and then data. So yeah, somebody's transmitting. And I've been having troubles in the garage. Every once in a while, my remote just won't work. And uh, I have discovered that um, with this test that I just did, because I got this thing, if somebody else is transmitting, my light just won't hear me. It's like the two, these two datas collide, and then you don't get any good data into the thing, because it's this on-off keying. So if there's any safety, it's, it's encoded in the data stream. It has to send a serial number or something. But yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty awful. All right, well, there you go. I'm going to call it a chip of the day. I'm going to call it a chip of the day for the CMT2210LC. A uh, very cool little chip. It's a receiver. Uh, this company also builds a CMT21XX, which is a transmitter. And between those two chips, you could create little remote control type of things. And thanks to my neighbor for the, uh, <laughs> for the handful of farts. Thank you.